Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video we're going to have a look at questions 42 to 48 of the third section of the Green Booklet. So this is a question about the respiratory system in a bird and comparing that to the same in a mammal. Question 42 says, for the breath of radioactively labelled air, gas exchange in the bird occurs mainly in which stage? Okay, so let's think about what the different cycles are. And of course, we're looking at figure three here. We've got um, the first step, which is step A, uh, in which you get inspiration. And what happens in step A then? So you're going to be drawing air into the next stage. The difference between um, a mammal and a bird's uh, respiratory system is going to be that the birds doesn't have um, sort of an in and out. Uh, instead, it's like a one-way system and air will flow through in this one-way system from one sac to the next. So the initial breath will draw air into the next stage. Um, in will draw air in, of course, and then in B, uh, you can see that you get some expiration here. And this is where the sacs sort of contract and it increases the pressure and moves the air along. And they move along um, the um, parabronchi. And this is where the uh, gas exchange takes place. It's in these um, sort of pipes between these main sacs. Um, so this is where all the gas exchange will mainly happen. If we look at C then, um, we get more inspiration which sucks the air out of these power bronchi into uh, the next sac. And then part D is going to be expiration into the environment. So it's really just passing air uh, along these different uh, systems of sacs. Um, so this is going to be the stage in which the air is passing through parabronchi and it's the early stage which this will happen so it will have a higher oxygen content. So this will be the main stage of gas exchange. And so we can say the answer for number 42 is going to be B. So if we look at 43 then it says unlike the human respiratory system, the respiratory system of a bird is what? Okay, so let's go through all the different answers. It says in A, the lungs are not vascularized. Um, it says poorly vascularized, but it doesn't say completely not vascularized. So we can assume the answer is not A. Um, B says the diaphragm operates only during exhalation. Uh, in the human respiratory system, the diaphragm works during inhalation and exhalation. It's responsible for changing the enterothoracic pressure, um, increasing it to exhale, but also increasing it in inhalation. So it's not going to be B either. If we look at C, um, then it says air gets into the blood by mechanisms not involving diffusion. Well, there's no other way for oxygen to pass through these membranes. Um, and it's really important that that system works properly. So that's not going to be the answer. Instead, for 43, the answer is going to be D, which is that the air does not trace the same path during inhalation and exhalation. So there's a diagram um, given that sort of shows all the different sacs that the bird has. Um, and it makes it look more like a one-way system like this. The air travels through. But in humans, of course, air goes into the lungs and then is breathed straight back out again, um, as opposed to passing through from one system to the next. Um, so instead of it being sort of this more circular system like the bird has, um, the air traces the same path um, in and out. Uh, which is the difference between the human and the respiratory system uh, of the bird. So the answer for this one is going to be D. 44 says which one of the following human structures is most similar in function to the bird's sacs? And so let's go through them. A says single lung. Well, the lungs have similar um, functions, of course, but in humans, that's for gas, gas exchange. And um, in birds, it relies on parabronchi instead of alveoli, so it's a little bit different. Um, B says the diaphragm. So the bird doesn't have a diaphragm per se, the sacs inflate and deflate, but um, they do cause a change in the pressure and that can draw air in and squeeze air out. So it does have exactly the same function um, that's as the bird sacs. That is 
completely the same function. So the answer for this one is going to be B. To rule out the other two, um, C says single rib. Well, ribs are important not only for increasing and decreasing the thoracic pressure because of these intercostal muscles, but they also protect the lungs, obviously. But of course, the, the ribs of a bird would be slightly different because they have this contraction um, of the sacs instead. And D says um, the trachea. Um, the trachea in humans uh, doesn't do the same thing as the sacs in the birds. The trachea doesn't inflate and deflate. It stays the same shape because of the cartilage in it. So it's not the right answer here too. So the answer here is going to be B. 45 says air is exhaled from the bird during which stage? So going up to our thing uh, up here, you can see that air is forced along this system in the exhalation stages, which are these two here. And if there's always going to be air at the system in all the stages, anytime you have any exhalation, you're going to be squeezing some air out so that you can always breathe some air in in the inhalation stages. So in any stage that there's going to be exhalation, there's going to be um, any uh, anytime there's going to be any contraction of those sacs, sorry, there's going to be some exhalation. Um, so that means that the answer for this one is going to be B and D stages. So the answer is going to be C in this case. If we look at 46 then, it says a large bird and a human both breathing at a constant rate of 10 inhalations per minute, each begin to inhale radioactively labelled air. Assume that the durations of the inhalation and exhalation are equal. Compared with when it first begins to be exhaled from the bird, but radioactively labelled air will first begin to be exhaled from the human. Okay, so again, this is just comparing the systems that they have. Um, the bird has a more intricate system of sacs like this, and I'm going to just draw them in here. Um, not all of them. So if you imagine these sort of bumps are going to be the sacs and the narrow bits are going to be the parabronchi between them that I'm not drawing too well. You can see that air can move in here and it's going to be forced along with each um, exhalation and inhalation. You're going to get it just being forced from one node or one sac to the next. And so you're always going to be exhaling air you're always going to be breathing in some new air. This air doesn't have to retrace the path, it's just taken as in humans, whereas if you have the lung in humans, it looks a bit like this. Um, air goes in and then immediately is sent out again. So we're told that there's 10 inhalations per minute, that means there's one every six seconds. They will both breathe in radioactively labelled air at the same time, but how long will it take for it to get through this system and how long will it take for um, the human to exhale it? As soon as the human exhales it, we'll call that time equals zero. And because it takes a whole cycle for air to be pushed around um, the system like this in the bird, because it has this sort of one-way system for the flow of air, we'll take an extra six seconds or one extra breath for everything to be pushed around the system. So that's why the answer for this one is going to be C. It's going to happen in the human six seconds earlier because the air is immediately expelled after it's been inhaled instead of it being cycled around the system before it's released. 47 says members of which one of the following pairs have the least similar function. Okay, so in humans, the lungs and the sac um, are both um, Sorry, in humans, the, the lung is where the site of gas exchange is, and in birds, it's in the parabronchi, not in the sac. So they're not very similar at all. So I'd be tempted to put this as my answer. But if, let's rule out the other ones. Um, B says the lung and the lung, uh, of course, that have similar functions. Um, because that's where the gas exchange happens. The alveoli and the parabronchi have the same function. That's where gas exchange happens in both. Um, so they are similar. And then bronchioles and parabronchi. Well, they both direct the movement of air throughout the respiratory system, um, so they do have a similar function. So yeah, the answer for this one is going to be A. And then 40, it says, according to the information provided, which one of the following is likely to be the most important reason that anterior and posterior sacs contract simultaneously and expand simultaneously? And I'm going to come back to this diagram here with all the arrows on it. Because imagine they didn't uh, contract and um, relax at the same time, say you had some air here, and this one then expanded, the air would be sucked backwards. 
or if this one expanded, the air would be sucked this way. And you can get this forward and backwards movement of um, air, depending on the localized pressures within each of these sacs. And that wouldn't be very good because then you can get air sort of pushing into air and this turbulent flow of air is less efficient. Um, and so this is a really good way of um, stopping the airflow from going in the correct direction. Obviously you want it to continue so it can go out once all the oxygen that could be absorbed has been. Um, whereas if everything is going in sort of synchrony, as I say here, um, then that means that there's only always going to be this sort of constant flow in this direction here, which is really important. So the answer for number 48 is going to be A. But to rule out the other ones, we'll go through them. B says to maintain a high air pressure in the lungs. Well, of course, that's important to keep everything inflated. Um, the contraction of these sacs wouldn't really have much of an effect on that. C says so that only one breath of air is in the respiratory system at any one time. Um, well, of course, the respiratory system would be full of air. Um, if they were contracting and expanding at different times, then it wouldn't really affect that. This is more about the airflow just going in the correct direction. And then D says because regulation by the central nervous system generally involves synchrony. And while that is completely true, it says according to the information provided. And there's no information provided about the role of the central nervous system in the regulation of this. So we can say that the answer is going to be A for this. So that was uh, questions 42 to 48 of section 3 of the Green Booklet. I hope that helped. Thanks for watching.